This is how I make my cryptid mini tin dioramas. First things first, I pick out my mini tins and then I find my tiny items that I want to go inside, like gray aliens and ducks. Those are my favorite things. I start by pressing my Sculpey clay into the bottom of the mini tin, which is much easier to do with two hands when you're not filming it. <laughs> but it goes something like this. While I do have actual clay sculpting tools, I do use fondant cake tools to do some of the smaller areas inside the tin. They just work better in some places. And they cost like 99 cents for a set of them. And look at the beautiful pond I made so quickly. Next, I wanna make sure all my items fit inside the tin when the lid closes. So pressing items like flying saucers into place and then sculpting around those indents is a great way to make sure everything fits perfectly. See, perfect. And now it's time to figure out where I'd like to place all my little items, like this tree. The trick of this is to make the hole wider than the trunk of the tree because clay expands. Sometimes I'll even put a toothpick into that hole to hold the space while it's baking. There's my little duck. And one's gonna just sit in the duck pond so he won't need an indent. And then I need a spot for my little alien's booty. <laughs> and then this guy's going to be standing over here going, Oh no, my flying saucer just crashed. <laughs> I think that's coming along pretty nicely. So it's time to work on these little gray aliens a bit. Now, just like with the tree, I've got to make the spaces that they fit into larger than the actual little figure because those areas are gonna fill in as a clay bakes and expands, and even while it's cooling. Here you can see how much space I'm leaving around the little duck figurine in the clay. Plenty of room, and I'm gonna use this tool to do the same with the little butt imprints and footprints. Just make them so that the figurine fits in afterwards. Next, use rubbing alcohol and a paintbrush to smooth out any fingerprints or little divots in the clay. But be careful with this step. The alcohol does wonders and it can quickly remove your details. Don't overdo it. And now it's time to make the flying saucers. So let's take these plastic toys and hit them with some black paint. There's the before after. Pretty good. No, I'm not baking cookies. This isn't a cookie. It's a flying saucer. Oh, poor poopy. It is really important that you make sure your mini tins do not have any kind of plastic coating on them. Mine are completely metal. And now I'm going to set my toaster oven to 275. And depending on the thickness of your little diorama, I'll set the timer. I'll do between 20 and 30 minutes. That was fast. <laughs> now let's give it time to cool. After it cools, this is the time to make sure all little pieces fit. And if they don't, this is where you do your little sanding and drilling or whatever you need to do with little scrapey tools to make sure everything fits. And the reason for this is if you accidentally break something, you can repair it with more Sculpey clay and re-bake it again. Once you've painted it, you can't do that. So everything fits. Perfect. And now it's time for me to paint, which is one of my favorite things. I used color shifting paint on my flying saucers and I have found they work the best on a black surface. So if you want maximum effect, of shimmeriness, use them on black. Now I'm gonna paint little eyes on my aliens and ducks because they couldn't see. That's better. After painting, it's important to retest and make sure everything still fits in their little grooves. And then it's time to move on to clear coat. I use actual Sculpey clear coat because anything else will never dry properly and it will make your diorama sticky forever. So use this clear coat only. And now it's time to clear coat the flying saucers. 
I use a little piece of tape underneath them, scotch tape, and that's how I hold them still while I spray so they don't blow around. And now it's time to put a little blue in my pond. Just a few drops makes it nice and glossy and pretty. And then I have to tip the tin around, spread it around a little bit. Myself, personally, I like to do this in layers and just build it up slowly over a couple of days. That way I get to control the final effect a little bit better, but you could pour it all at once. These little ducks came with a green base, but I want them to sit in the pond, so some of them need a blue base. So they match. And for those of you who are wondering, Moth Mom, where did you get those adorable little cryptid aliens? Where'd those tiny grays come from? A friend of mine printed them up for me, and I'll put her contact information in the description of this video. And now it's time to make the labels for my mini tin. I did the artwork myself, printed them up on sticker paper, and now press them on. The trick of this is press those stickers down really well. Friction, adhere them. Really get them on there. <laughs> Don't mess around. The more attentive you are to this detail now, the less bubbling you'll have later. And now it's time for our Mod Podge multi-dimensional magic. This is how I do my clear coats. And the first coat should be very, very thin. This is where you want the sticker paper to expand so you can work out the bubbles. And you don't want to do that with a lot of Mod Podge. Also, use a soft, cheap paintbrush. I like the ones that come with kids' watercolor sets. I think that's where this came from and do the same on the lid. This has already had its first coat and look at that little wrinkle. And once it's dry and it dries really quickly in that first coat, you just roll it out with your finger. And now it's time for second coats. This time you wanna use a lot. Again, very soft brush or else you'll get streaks in the clear coat. There's a fine line between when you can work the bubbles. You don't want it to be tacky, but you don't want it to be fully dry. There really is a small window of workability to getting out all those bubbles. And then I put on another coat after that. So that's three coats of multi-dimensional magic. And ta-da! Here's my mini tin. And I call this one E.T. Phones Call Ducks. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> call Ducks. It's a duck joke. But why make one diorama when you can make two at the same time? For this one, I'm going to do the water feature differently. I'm using some little plastic beads for my bubbles, and I use some regular old Elmer's glue to set them down in place. I'm going to use some clear Elmer's glue as the water of my pond. I've set down some little stones from my beach trip to Bluff Point. Remember that video? And then I used a little wooden hors d'oeuvre fork to slowly spread that glue into the pond, which I'll need to repeat at least one or two more times to fill the pond properly. But basically, this is it. Look at how cute it is. All the little pieces are movable, you can play with them, and then when you're done, you lay them down in the tin, close the lid for storage. I give these and other mini tins away as thank you gifts to our sanctuary donors. I'll put the link in the description. Want to see some of those other mini tins? Here you go, slideshow. Mix and match magnetic dress up duck. Arts and crafts featuring our rescued duck, Sheena. Birds of a feather featuring Angelo the gander. A mosaic of ducks. A vintage inspired reproduction. Magnetic Muscovy Ductionary. Welcome to downtown Ducktown. I have a number of tins featuring Rudy the Duck, and this is his ancient gardens, his jungle river, and Rudy's volcano. My flying machine tins were inspired by one of our adopters who's a pilot and he flew all the way to Connecticut to adopt his rescued ducks from us. I also made biblical seraphim tins, but in some of them I removed the human and put in a duck instead because ducks are way better. While this playset may be a little too big for a mini tin, it does have fun and interchangeable tiles. I also make a number of take along micro mini tins, including this one, wine charms, and this one, a little notebook and pencil. 
and this educational one, don't feed ducks bread, or cake for that matter, or the take-along ducky winks. And in case you need a portable mini dictionary, here's our travel size version. <laughs> Oh. Uh -huh.